This is a show that will blow your mind, but it might not. It all depends. Do you like breakfast and a book with a friend? Hello, guys. So... Got that. We already got the tea going. Oh, I think this is ready, too. Yeah, it's steeped enough. We're gonna have some delicious tea. Yeah, guys. So, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to what is now called cooking breakfast, and a book with Swallow. Um, I woke up and my hair was like this, you guys. This is what my hair looks like when I wake up. It's, it's pretty cool. I just, you guys, you gotta admit, it is pretty cool that I just woke up with a faux hawk every single day looking this good. <laughs> um, I got my, uh, uh, my Hero Academia shirt on, my Green Lantern jacket. We did a reboot it on our YouTube channel called uh, where we rebooted Green Lantern, and I think we made it pretty good. So today, this is what we're gonna do. We've got this waffle batter. We're going to try to make make it on the stove. Bam! This is hot. You shouldn't put it that near your face. So, first, a little butter, of course, so it uh, sticks not as much, but doesn't stick as much. What's up? Brock Smith. Hi, Ron. Hi. Oh, hey. Hey, Brock. How's it going? Welcome welcome to uh, uh, Cooking Breakfast and a Book with Swallow. If you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be making a cooking show because Donald Trump is in office, and he didn't take care of a pandemic correctly, I would have been like, you're crazy. What's a pandemic? And Donald Trump is the president? What the fuck? But that's what's going on. So, knife, butter. Ooh, we're gonna get a sizzle. Yeah, we are. Save that one for the next one. We've got the cool plates. Bam. Let's see how this goes, you guys. This could be very exciting. Good morning, Christy. Yeah, we're taking waffle batter. It's not pancake batter, you guys. It is waffle batter. And we're seeing how it does on the uh, stove here. This evened out over here. We're gonna make some small ones because we only have a little bit left. Bam. We don't know how this is gonna go, guys. We have never ever made pancakes for waffle batter. For rebels, you guys. We're getting crazy. We getting crazy. Let's see how it looks. Let's see how it looks, you guys. It pretty much looks like pancakes. Surprising, right? Let's see. Uh, oh, there's the wall. This guy, we're going to do this right here. Yeah, pretty much looks like pancakes. Christy says she made Christy says she made pancakes for dinner last night. A fine decision, pancakes for dinner. Don't let anyone tell you when to make pancakes, when not to make pancakes, you guys. You you do what you want. You nobody tells you when breakfast is or when it isn't. Uh, my friend Haley Boyle said it succinctly, I think, when he she said breakfast is a state of mind. So is second breakfasts, as you guys know. So let's see how they turned out here. We'll do a little quick flip. I think they're 
ready to flip here. Let's see if I can do it without messing it up. Let's see. Uh, uh, maybe not yet. Yeah, no. Uh-oh. Maybe a little... Well, no, that'll work. Uh, not bad, not bad. Like I said, I'm not 100% used to cooking on this electric stove. Sorry if that was uh, crazy. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, used to cooking on the electric stove, uh, so I'm still getting used to that. But, they seem to come out okay. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, apparently the pan cooks a different uh, heat depending on where it's at. It sure seems like that at least. I think we can get one more pancake in there. So we're going to do that. Yeah. I'm cooking, you guys. I'm making the stuffs, and uh, and then I'm using my laptop to prop up this phone. Oh, look at the steam on that tea, you guys. Oh, doesn't that look delicious? It's steam, but somehow it looks delicious. Christy says, I always do what I want. Good, good for you, Christy. You do what you want. This is America, but you guys, listen to the scientists and stay in your goddamn house, okay? You know, like, go get groceries when you gotta get groceries, but wear gloves and a hazmat suit, and be careful, because it's, it's a nightmare out there, you guys. Um, okay, I think we're good on the pancake. Bam. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Not bad. Now we're gonna get eggs started on the other pan. This one might be a little too hot, you guys. Let's see if we mess up the eggs, guys. You guys, I think we're gonna mess up the eggs. Let's find out. We gotta put a little salt on them, because who doesn't want salt on their eggs? Eh, yeah, salt, yeah, that's what we're doing. A little bit of garlic too. See, garlic, cheap garlic powder. Mm -mm. Hopefully that wasn't too much garlic powder. Breakfast for dinner is the best. That is true, Brock. You're not wrong there. Oh, well, you know what? This might be okay. This probably isn't the recommended way to uh, cook eggs, but... Yeah, it's a little brown. A little, a little, a little, a little cooked there. I think that'll be okay. Didn't mean to go to blackness, guys. We'll edit that out later. Hello! There's still a little egg over here, so we're gonna do that. Get that out there. The egg part is pretty difficult, you guys. So I learned one thing about um, these... Um, these electric stoves. Uh, no, someone said no such thing as too much garlic. You know what? You're right. You are right. So one of the things I learned about um, these electric stoves is that it, when they get warm, you then turn it off and let it cool down a little bit, and then it does pretty good that way. Okay, I got to use two hands while I do this. Let's see if we can make this stay okay. Here we go. Doing a little hand washing. Always be sure to stay on top of washing your hands, you guys. Brock says living is such is a good thing. Yes, it is. That's why you stay alive and you listen to the science. That's what Christy says. She wants does what she wants, but she's gonna stay alive too. So listen to the science, and that's what she wants to do, and that's what you should all want to do. 
listen to the scientists. And I just want to mention, um, if you're wondering about what the accurate information about the COVID virus is, go to the CDC and the WHO. They have all the correct information. Do not listen to anyone else. That is it. Some friend posts a thing. Some dude posts a YouTube video of a supposed doctor doing a thing. Don't listen to them. Just go to the CDC and confirm. Right egg, coming up. Now we're gonna put some cheese on here. Cause cheese makes everything better. We gotta get a grater, I'm not prepared. Hey bit. How's it going? How's it going? That's good. Ariel's here, you guys. She's not in the camera right now. Hi. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. Well, smoky. I also want to try your waffle pancakes. Yes. Go ahead and take those two. Actually, take well, these no, you're two. you're filming, babe. You have to, like, you just finished your filming. Don't worry about me. I'll see you later. Okay. So that's it, you guys. Almost done here. The eggs are coming along pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at that. I will show you eggs on my camera. I'm making eggs and it is cool. Look at the cheese and the eggs. Everything's great in yeah. I'm gonna try this. Ariel's gonna try a bite. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It tastes like a waffle with all the stuff you put in the waffle. Okay. But the texture is more like a pancake. All right. Yeah, works. So you guys solved the pancake. Tastes like waffle because it's waffle mix, but it's still the texture of a pancake. Who'd have thunk it? Bam, that seems to be working. Now the eggs are done. Cheesy eggs for my babe. We're probably gonna do them on a different plate because who wants eggs mixed with their pancakes? I don't know. That seems like a mess, don't you guys think? What's up? Don't worry, you weren't on camera. Oh, okay. That was my roommate Andy. You did not see him, but he uh, walked by. So now we're gonna do. One more pancake waffle. Also, you get to meet my roommate's dog right now. He is adorable. This is Chapo. Hey, Chapo. Hello! Chapo is very cute and a good dog. Yeah! See, that's what you get when you watch Breakfast with Ron. Cooking breakfast in a book with Swallow. You get a bunch of pancakes, you get dogs, you get cats, you get craziness, and you're gonna get me talking about Terry Brooks in about five minutes. We're gonna do the pancake here, slash waffle pancake. We're gonna do the waffle pancake. Um, if for those of you who just showed up, I basically made waffles yesterday, had a little leftover batter, and people wondered if you have to use the waffle iron, and I was like, well, let's find out. And we're, we're cooking these uh, waffle batter uh, on the, the grill, like on a regular pan, with a little butter, of course. And we'll see how it all turns out. That one turned out good. I think we finally got the grill at the right spot. See, let's check this one out. 
Yeah, that turned out good. I think that's how it's supposed to look, you guys. So that is a waffle pancake, you guys. And this is how we do it, baby. A fried egg on a pancake is goo. You eat them together and add syrup after the egg is gone. Sort of best of both worlds. That is a great idea, Janet. Janet just said you put a fried egg on a pancake uh, and then it's, you eat them together. Um, that also sounds uh, like my worst nightmare. Uh, not really, but like one of the things I do is I, uh, ooh, er, good, not good, goo, that makes sense. A fried egg on a pancake is good, you eat them together. I eat all of my things separately and I eat them in the order. <laughs> hey, look, you gotta be yourself. I eat them in the order of deliciousness. So like if there's broccoli, potatoes, and then a steak, I will eat the broccoli first, even though I like the broccoli. Then I will eat the, uh, the, the potatoes. Then I will eat the steak. Um, is it crispier? I don't know. We're going we're gonna to find out. I also got to bring Ariel her food. So hold on one second, guys. separate plates so that Ariel does not have to eat them together. We'll do mine on the same plate and I'll just won't worry about it. I'll I'll give in to my normal wants. We got a little syrup. Mmm syrup. My personal preference is light syrup. You want to have enough that covers all the pancakes, but you don't want to have it just soaked in it. Then you're just eating syrup. Not that I'm averse to just eating syrup, by the way. I will totally just eat your syrup. This is Ariel's favorite fork. It's smaller. I don't know why. I'll be back. Two minutes. Kidding. 45 seconds. I'm back, but then I'll be back again. I'm back. All right, we did it, guys. We made waffle pancakes. Pretty cool. Now I got to get everything out of the way because I got roommates. I can't just leave a mess before we go talk about Terry Brooks. Sizzle, sizzle, yeah, washing dishes, getting crazy. I know, you guys are probably semi-bored, but stay on tune. Stay on board. We're going to talk to Terry Brooks soon. All right. Going to go put butter away. accomplished you guys a little bit of syrup on my pancake slash waffle pancake my fork is over here all right I'll be back in two and 30 seconds
Your patience is amazing. Pafala cakes. Janet says Pafalics. Pafalics. Pafalics is perfect, you guys. That's what we're going to call it. Pafalics. So here's my. We're going to my breakfast nook now. Oop, we forgot something. We gotta have a thing to prop up the camera on while we talk about Terry Brooks and take a bite or two of the thing. I'm breathing way too hard for not a lot of uh, physical activity, you guys. It's crazy. I used to be an athlete. If anybody knows, back in the day, I did all kinds of athletic stuff. Now, I do a lot of reading and making weird videos and doing stand-up. So here we go. We're now to the breakfast and the book part where I take a bite or two of this stuff and take a breath. Whew. Ah, tea, you guys. Tea is delicious. Uh, this is my little breakfast nook. You can see a dragon. And if you can't tell, there's a gargoyle reading a book because that's how we do it. There's some of my books, not even close to all of them. There's a Princess Leia poster, a Ray poster, and a Spider Gwen poster. Yeah, oh, also C-3PO and Iron Man. Basically, this is my little nerdy breakfast nook. So, let's try out the eggs. Stinky feet. Oh, did you, did I, accidentally show you my feet that would be terrible no one should ever see feet the eggs came out good they only took like 30 seconds to make too Powerful cakes Powerful cake Powerful cakes that's perfect that's how we say it let's see how those turned out <laughs> Yeah, really good. All right, you guys. I pulled it off. We made good food. Really fast. And now we're going to talk about my favorite author of all time. I have read every single book by Terry Brooks. It's, uh, this one, um, I just picked out of... Uh, of um, one of the books up there. One in the top shelf right there is all Terry Brooks books, but not all of my Terry Brooks books because I haven't unpacked them all as of yet. No, you used to have stinky feet when you were skating. Yes, Christy. My feet were a nightmare and uh, they are still stinky if I go skating, uh, which I don't skate as much as I used to, but every once in a while I do. And I might do it during the apocalypse, uh, or Corona apocalypse, because uh, nobody's around. So I can just skate and nobody will laugh at an old guy with a pot belly skating around. So this is The Druid of Shannara. Uh, Terry Brooks has written 30 best-selling novels. He's sold millions and millions of copies. Um, I would argue that he is, next to Tolkien, probably the greatest fantasy author of all time. Um, and Tolkien is only because he started it all. Um, I would say that Terry Brooks is not only a better writer, um, but uh, a better storyteller and, um, and is more prolific as well. Because obviously, um, uh, uh, Tolkien only wrote the, the five books, I guess. You could argue the Silmarillion, the one I can never say correctly. Um, but this is the fourth book in the Heritage of Shannara thing. Uh, where Al-Anon uh, is needed to be replaced. Uh, Al-Anon died um, in uh, one of the books. And uh, Al-Anon, if you don't know, is... <laughs> I'm just like talking to you guys like you don't know, like you know who Al-Anon is. Al-Anon is in the uh, Sora Shannara, the Elf Stones of Shannara, the Elf Queen of Shannara. Um, no, not the Elf Queen. That's a different one. That's Ren. Um, and... Um, the uh, Wish Song of Shannara, I want to say. Um, this is with Walker Bow. I'm just going to read the back for you. It is a, a world uh, where we turns out, we find out later on that the world has been destroyed. Um, 
and uh, uh, by a, a nuclear holocaust brought on by these uh, these uh, demon type uh, bad guys who basically corrupted human beings and made them send off all the nukes and fucked up everything. Um, but it also started over everything. Um, and then later on, uh, the elves come back out. There's dwarves, trolls, uh, goblins, a bunch of different people who were made by the uh, leftover radiation and stuff like that. And then humans survived as well. There's a way they did that. It's very complicated. It's a lot of books. You should read literally every single book by Terry Brooks. No, but I'm going to read the back. In the 300 years since the death of the Druid Alanon, the mysterious evil Shadowin have seized control of the Four Lands. The Shade of Alanon summons the four signs of Shannara, Par, Cole, Ren, and Walker Bow. To Walker Bow, he gives the duty of restoring the lost Druid's keep, Paranor. For that, Walker Bow needs the Black Elfstone, but his search leads him into a trap. Quickening, the daughter of the ancient king of the Silver River, finds Walker Bow dying after an attack by the Shadow and Rimmer Dahl. She heals Walker Bow and tells him that the Elf Stone is in the hands of the Stone King, who seeks to turn all the world to stone. To secure the Elf Stone, they must travel through the Charnall Mountains into the perilous unknown land beyond, and no one knows what horrible monster the Stone King has set to guard his citadel. They form a strange company to undertake the quest. Walker Bow, with only one arm and no longer able to summon his magic. Morgan Leia, whose once magic sword has been broken. Quickening, who must depend on the men of her, for her defense, and Pel'el, an assassin who plans eventually to kill her. Thus, the quest for the Black Elfstone begins. This book is bananas good. It is crazy good. So, let's look at this. He came from between two bull- oh, so- if you guys don't know this, one of the things I do is when I'm looking for a book from an author I don't know, I open up in the middle of the book and I check it out. You're going to hear this every episode because I don't know when new people are listening, so you have to hear it. Uh, I open up in the middle of the book and I read it to get an idea of the writing because that gives you – you can get a vibe from it, I would say. So here it is. He came down from between two boulders into depression and the coden rose up before him, cat quick. It seemed to materialize out of the earth, as if the dust that lay upon the rock had suddenly come together to give it form. It was huge and old and grizzled, three times its own size, with great shaggy limbs and ragged yellow claws that curled down to grip the rock. It lifted onto its hind legs to show itself to him, and it twisted snout, huffed, and opened to reveal a glistening row of teeth. Sightless white eyes peered down at him. Walker stood his ground his life a slender thread that a single swipe of one huge paw could sever. He saw that the Coden's head and body had been distorted by some dark magic to make the creature appear more grotesque, and that the symmetry of shape that had once given grace to its power had been stripped away. Speak to me, thought Walker Bow. The Coden blinked its eyes and dropped down so close that the huge muzzle was no more than inches from the dark uncle's face. Walker forced himself to meet the creature's empty gaze. He could feel the hot, fetid breath. Tell me, he thought. There was an instant's time when he was certain that he was going to die, that the magic had failed him entirely, that the Coden would reach out and strike him down. He waited for the claws to rend him, for the end to come. Then he heard the creature answer him, the guttural sounds of its own language captured and transformed by the magic. Help me, the Coden said. A flush of warmth filled Walker. Life returned to him in a way he found difficult to describe, as if he had been reborn and could believe in himself again. A flicker of a smile crossed his face. The magic was still his. Uh, there's more to it, but that gives you an idea of the intensity of writing that comes from Terry Brooks. So the world of Shannara is basically, like I said, a uh, an apocalypse story where people uh, uh, survived a, a holocaust, a nuclear holocaust, and barely saw, survived it. So there's trolls and there's all kinds of other things, and he starts his writing starts off. Um, definitely a little more uh, tropish in the fantasy world, but he just keeps getting better and better. His last book was amazing. Uh, you should for sure read every single book that Terry Brooks has ever written. Um, I mean, his writing, it just paints a picture. Uh, it feels like you are in the, in the world, and he really, you can really see everything, every tree, 
every building, so whatever creepy bad guy with spines and grotesque and drool and uh, like all of it. You see all of it, and it's amazing. So uh, yeah, and also it, you're it, while you're in the quarantine, he's got like twenty or thirty books that you could definitely just blast through, and uh, they're they're not super easy reads. Uh, because it, they're dense, but they uh, but they are quick reads once you start getting into them, and you will not want to put them down. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I suggest. Definitely check that stuff out. Also, just to give a little bit of uh, what's going on in Ron Swallow's life, that's me, Ron Swallow. But I'm not going to talk about myself in third person. I promise. Um, I have a, a couple of things going. Obviously, this show which has now turned into cooking, breakfast, and a book with Swallow. Um, and then I also have uh, uh, Nerd Goat. If you haven't listened to Nerd Goat, you're out of your mind. It's the best podcast on the planet. Uh, me and Ed Greer and our producer talk about people's favorite fictional characters of all time. Uh, we've done from Liz Lemon to Elaine from Seinfeld. We've done from... Daredevil to Dark Side. Uh, we talked about Moon Knight on the last episode. Uh, and if you want to like support us directly, you can go to patreon.com slash nerdgoatpodcast and sign up for the $5 tier, which gets you extra podcasts where we're talking about more personal subjects, just ideas we had. We have one where we talked about AI, another one where we talked about Saturn Ray morning cartoons and what cereal we ate and what the best Pop-Tart was. Maybe you have a different opinion on that. Um, and also, if you want to support uh, me and you have money to support me, uh, all you have to do is go to at ron-swallow on Venmo or uh, ronswallow at Gmail for my PayPal. And uh, I'll be using that to pull off paying rent for the next couple months because all the work I used to have dried up because of the coronavirus, which I'm sure a lot of you are going through. Uh, but if some of you aren't going through it and you can help out others, that is going to be the way we're going to survive because... Um, uh, well, you know, most, most likely not a lot of help is coming our way. Uh, it, it's something that doesn't happen very often in our society uh, beyond the people who we know. So be supportive of each other out there. Like call your friends, Facebook, FaceTime them, uh, do all the stuff you can to stay connected because it's very important that we do that. It's a, we're social animals, even a person like me who mostly likes to stay inside and read books. We got to be in touch with people. We got to be around each other. It's very important. So definitely get out there and do that. Um, and also, the last thing I'm going to tell you about is you should check out Reboot It on YouTube. It's uh, with Billy Business from Screen Junkies, Ed Greer, my friend, producer Bill. You'll actually get to see his face. And me talking about uh, different re re uh, rebooting franchises that no one wants you to reboot. Uh, we just did Green Lantern. Uh, and I think we made a very good Green Lantern story, and I think you guys would enjoy it. So check that out, and thank you for supporting all the goofy shit I do. I hope I kept you entertained for this uh, quarantine. I hope I, you know, made your day a little bit goofier and sillier, and maybe you learned uh, that waffle batter can also make delicious pancakes. So thank you for listening to Cooking, Breakfast, and a Book with Swallow. Bye, guys.